So, as you may have witnessed, I'm an improvisational person, and uh, there is perfection in the imperfection for me. And so there's a couple of miracles in this. You might be thinking, why in the heck was she singing that song? And did she know it? I don't know what you were thinking, but there's some miracles in it because a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have stood up and sang in front of anybody. And so for me, it's not just about being the perfect singer. It's about claiming something new for myself. And that's what I want to talk to you about today is about how many of us have been told something in our lives by someone, maybe more than one thing, that we took on as a belief about ourselves and carried it with us for a very long time. Anyone? Anyone done that? Yeah. And so what I want to share with you today is my personal story of questioning everything I believed about myself and finding out that a lot of the things I carried around were not my truth. And how could I claim what really was the truth of who I am? And so one of those things I just shared with you, someone told me one time, you probably shouldn't sing. And I carried that as a truth that I shouldn't sing. And guess what? Every time I sang after that, I sang horribly. I sang as though I shouldn't sing. And so a couple of years ago, I was reading a book you may have heard of called The Four Agreements. This, this is my Bible. <laughs> so, and I tell this because I've studied it numerous times. I lead book studies on it. Last fall, I did a Skype study as well as a home study on it um, because it's changed my life over and over again. And so I was reading The Four Agreements um, for the fourth or fifth time a few years ago. And suddenly it was like, why am I claiming this is my truth? Why am I allowing this to be my truth when I know that it's not? And it had me write down, write down a list of everything that you can think of. Go back as far as you can and think about everything that you can think of that you've taken on as a belief about yourself in one column. And then the other, is it really your truth? And when I did that, I found out that like 90% of what I've been carrying was not my truth. Whoa, now what? Now it's to build what is mine to do. What is my truth? And so as I began to do the book again and start to step into what my truth was, one of those things was claiming my voice, claiming my authenticity. And I say that the only way to claim what is the truth of who I am is to stand in it and to kick out those things that are no longer my truth. And so the way I kicked out that I'm not able to sing was to stand and sing. And so whether you're a musician, whatever you're doing in your life, whatever it is, no matter where you are on your journey, I invite you to stand in your truth. Yeah. We're here to stand together in our truth because what the world needs is for us to be people who are standing in our truth so we show up in that way. That's what I'm finding out. The world needs me to be the most authentic me that I can be. No shame, no hiding. And so I'm inviting you to show up in that way as well. And so some of the things that I discovered, I'm going to share with you that I discovered as I've been studying the four agreements over and over again. And some of the beliefs that I have decided are not my truth anymore. So one of the very first things when I was a, a little girl, about five years old, that I could remember on that list, I went back. And I was a tomboy, loved to play in the dirt cars, you know, and um, one of the first things that was said to me, and this doesn't mean that my parents did anything wrong, they were doing the best they could, and they were speaking from the best place that they could, but what I took on at five was I heard this, little girls don't do that, little girls don't wear that, and what I heard was I'm wrong as a girl, and I carried the truth that I was wrong as a girl throughout my life. And that played out in many different ways. So when I got in school, I felt wrong as a girl. I didn't feel like I fit in class. I didn't feel like I fit anywhere. Can anyone relate to taking on a small belief like that, whether it's you're a tomboy, whether it's your whatever, and you carry it. And then the snowball that happens on top of that, because I carried, I built all kinds of stories on top of one little thing that my, my parents said to me, girls don't do that. Then I must be wrong as a girl. And it took me years and years to be able to stand in being right as the girl that I am, that I chose to be, tomboy and all. 
And so, you know, I invite you guys to, to think about those things that we carry, because as I've begun to stand in that authenticity, I've attracted so many different things into my life. And I've been able to stand up here and do this. Never in a million years did I think, when I started out doing music, conscious rap, that I was gonna be speaking. That has just come from standing in my authentic self and claiming who I am. And all of a sudden people are like, hey, would you like to come and do that? And that's how I know that that's what the world needs for us to show up in that way. And so as I carried that, I'm not right as a girl, it played out in many, many ways. And so the next thing that happened, and this is a really important thing for me as, I, as I've begun my spiritual journey, is that sometimes we feel like we've done things that we can't overcome, that we carry a lot of shame and blame and guilt around, right? And there are stories that we carry that we're like, I don't know if I can ever get over that, that pain I caused someone else, the thing I did to myself. And there are things that I did and choices that I made that I felt like I could never get over. And I felt a lot of shame around. And so my choice today is to share those with you because I want you to let it go. I want you to lay those stories down and walk with the weightlessness that I'm beginning to experience. And so one of those things was I, I got into addiction. I, got it, I really got into a lot of addiction and a lot of uh, alcoholism. And it took me down a really dark path. And I was lying and cheating and stealing. And I was doing things that didn't make me feel good about me. And so I was doing those things and I thought I can't get back from this. And I carried myself in the world like everyone knew that I was nothing. And so one of those stories I had to lay down was that I'm something. That is not who I am, as Angel said in her first piece. I'm not defined by the things that I've done, by what I do. And so right now I want to share a song with you that I wrote called Lay the Story Down. And I want to invite you guys to lay your stories down as we sing this song. And it's something I wrote about that, and it should be track number four. Perfect. Okay. You'll be able to sing it with us too. It's so easy. I believe that I can get back from mistakes I've made, whatever it may seem, I've become, yeah, what I am is not what I have done, I can lay, 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 lay the story down, I lay the story down, you can sing that with us. I lay the story down. Sing it again. I lay the story down. One more time. I lay the story down. See how easy? And I believe, I believe that you can get back from yeah. mistakes. You may, whatever it may seem, you become yeah. What you are is not what you have done. You can lay, 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 lay the story down. I lay the story down. Who's ready to lay their stories down today? I lay the story down. I'm ready. I lay the story down. Yeah. I lay the story down. Yeah, I may have fallen, but then a time or two. But I'm not what I've done. I don't want to do. I can't move forward with the weight of the past. Gotta lay it down. Start to heal at last. Too much time I spent. 
thinking you could see the stars that I carried deep inside of me. They were never stars, I always kept them open, never could move on, kept myself frozen. So I heard others carried on the cycle, like a broken record, I needed a revival. My spirit and soul wanted to feel whole. What I found out, I had to let it go. You want to heal the world? I'll tell you what you do. Lay that story down, start by healing you. I lay the story down. Come on, let's lay the story down. I the story down. There you go. I lay the story down. Yeah. I lay the story down. Now believe. I believe that we can get back from. You believe it? Yeah. Mistakes we have made. They're not really mistakes anyway. Whatever it may seem, we become. It's all part of the learning. What we are is not what we have done. We can lay, 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 lay the story down. I lay the story down. Sing it with me. I lay the story down. But it's all laying down. I lay the story down. That's right. Feel that. I lay the story down. Say it I lay the story down. Last time. I lay the story down. Yeah. Already feeling a little weightlessness there. Just us singing that about laying our stories down. <clears throat> Let me get a drink real quick. You love how improvisational I am. <laughs> and so, is this service usually over at eleven thirty? Because I want to make sure I stay right on time. All right. So, um, and so another big thing that happened, the big choice that I made, and this is a big deal that I share this with you because I carried this story with me as the thing that I was going to take to my grave. You know those take to the grave secrets? Like nobody's going to know about that. I'm just going to keep that inside. And this was something I was so ashamed of that I thought I'm just not going to tell anybody. And I'm here telling people in public because guess what? It takes all the power away from that shame the more I share it and it empowers me. And so one of the choices that I made through my addictions was I ended up in a lot of psych wards and a lot of mental hospitals. And, um, and one of the choices I made was at 20 years old, I, had, I signed a paper to have shock treatments. And um, I had a dozen shock treatments. And before I had the shock treatments, I played the piano. And after I had the shock treatments, it was gone. And so one of the stories I carried was I ruined that for myself. I was never going to play the piano again because of the choice I had made. And so that's why I sing the song Laying the Story Down. Because as I was reading the four agreements and doing a book study with people a couple years ago, that came up for me again. Like I ruined that for myself. And I loved playing the piano. And then it came up again. Why haven't you tried? Why haven't you tried? And so for the first time in 15 years, of carrying the story of I'm not going to ever do that again, I decided to try. And so my trying was I was going to watch some YouTube videos and I was going to learn to play my favorite song of all time, which is Imagine. And um, so I started watching these YouTube videos and I started to learn to play Imagine. And that's where the singing came in because as I was playing, I also was singing so I know what the next note was. And someone said to me, you sound all right doing that. And so the next thing that happened for me was that I thought, well, as soon as I get it perfect, then I'll tell the world and I'll show them. I'll show them, then, then they'll get to see me playing Imagine. And then the very next thought that I had and the next guided message was, you're never gonna think it's perfect enough and you need to show people where you are on the journey so that you give them permission to step out too because none of us are ever gonna feel like it's okay to step out and be ourselves. And so I play Imagine wherever I go, and it's my version, and it may be perfect, 
I may miss a note, I may not, but I do it because I want you guys to know that wherever you are, just step out. The world needs to see that. We all need to give each other permission to step out where we are and stop waiting and hiding until we think that it's okay to be perfect because it is perfect just as it is. And so I'm gonna step over there to the keyboard and play Imagine and then we'll go from there. So, I invite you guys, if you could uh, hold some sacred space with me, and let's take a nice deep breath. Release any need for it to be anything other than it is. And this is my version of the magic. <laughs>
Thank you. And so I really just want to conclude by saying that um, whatever you've done, whatever choices you've made, wherever you are, whatever it is is yours to claim, I invite you to claim it and step out. The world needs you. The world needs your imagine, whatever that is. The world needs you to do that. And one of the things that's really beautiful about me relearning the piano is I'm, I'm playing it completely different than I did before. And so if I had not forgotten how I learned it in the first place, I wouldn't have been able to learn it this way. And so I consider it a gift and I'm grateful for every part of that journey. And so I invite you to step into your authentic self. We need you, the world needs you. Show up, you're perfect wherever you are. And I invite you to join me on this journey as we step out and we share with the world and we change the world one authentic person at a time. Thank you so much.